In this video, we're going to have a look at something called black body radiation and how that relates to Wien's law and the Stefan Boltzmann law and also how it links to the flux law. Um, this topic is sometimes taught in space, it's sometimes taught in thermodynamics, depending on your exam board. I personally think it fits best in space because stars are the best example that we have of a black body. Now, this is what a black body is. It's a perfect emitter or absorber of radiation and it emits the radiation dependent on temperature only. So black bodies are kind of theoretical things but the reason it's called a black body, if you think of uh, different surfaces that emit and absorb heat best, you might know that matte black surfaces are the best emitters and absorbers of heat and shiny white are pretty bad. So for example your radiator if you want your radiator to emit the most heat possible, you should paint it a matte black because it will emit more heat than a shiny white. We paint them shiny white because it looks nicer. Um, they're also the best absorbers of heat. If you're on a hot day, you wouldn't wear a black t-shirt because it absorbs heat really easily, whereas a white t-shirt reflects it more. So that's where this idea of black body comes from. Black things absorb and emit temperature, or sorry, radiation better than other colours. And a black body is something that emits and absorbs it perfectly. It fits the stats really well. And it emits the radiation dependent on temperature only. Now, what does that mean? Well, have a think about if you've got an iron nail and you're heating it up. When you've got a normal iron nail and it's not hot, it's emitting radiation, it's emitting infrared. If you put it into a Bunsen burner, the iron nail will gradually start to heat up and it will start to eventually glow and it will glow red then it will glow orange, then it will glow yellow, and then it will eventually glow white. And if you could get it hotter, it could glow blue. So what's happening there is that as we increase the temperature, we're increasing the frequency of the radiation that is emitted. So it's going from infrared radiation only to then it glows red, then it glows um, orange, then yellow. These have a higher frequency of radiation. Um, that means we are decreasing the wavelength because wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional to each other uh, for the equation c or v equals f lambda so the hotter the object the lower the wavelength of light that it's um, emitting and we also increase the intensity of the radiation which makes sense something that's hotter gives out more energy per second now we can show all of this on a graph a black body uh, radiation graph and it's a graph of intensity versus uh, wavelength or you will sometimes see it drawn with frequency um, and the axis going this way instead. Now this is the characteristic shape of a black body emitter um, for when it's at a certain temperature so this would probably be about uh, 6,000 Kelvin so quite a hot object so let's say 6,000 Kelvin here. Uh, now the shape, the things to look out for, it has a definite start. Uh, so at this point here, it has it meets the x-axis. It has an asymmetric peak here. So it's not a symmetric curve, it's an asymmetric curve with the peak on the left. And then it doesn't actually hit the x-axis um, further along, okay, on this side. It's asymptotic. Now let's think about what this graph is showing us. Okay, for this object, we're saying that the peak intensity is here, which you can see that for my um, wavelength, I've written infrared, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, UV. So the peak wavelength here is approximately over uh, the blue slash green uh, wavelength. Okay, so it's emitting most of its energy, um, or the, in the principal wavelength it's emitting is green or blue. And that happens at the peak. Then we're also saying it's emitting other radiation. It's emitting all radiation up to the start of UV. So it is emitting some violet, it is emitting some indigo. Um, but then past this point into UV, it's not emitting any UV. It has a definite start point. Um, it's also emitting green, yellow, orange, red and infrared, but it's emitting less of that than it is of the blue green. And this would be a, a kind of a white star essentially because it's emitting all the colours of light um, so they'll all mix together to make it white. Now I could uh, draw here a colder star and a hotter star and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start with a colder star. So a colder star would have a lower um, start point. 
It would also have a lower peak because it's not going to give out as much intensity of radiation. And that peak is going to be further over because the lower the temperature, the lower the frequency and the higher the wavelengths. So the peak might be here. Um, let me try and draw it in like so. And then it would carry on like that and it shouldn't hit the bottom there. Sorry, I've just made it hit the bottom there. So this would be colder. Let's say this is about 5000 Kelvin. And we can see here the peak now is more over the green yellow section. OK, so this star wouldn't look as white. It would look more yellowy. And to be fair, this is probably more like 6000 Kelvin than it's more like 7000 Kelvin. But we'll get past that. Uh, so this star would look more yellow and less white because yellow is colder than a white hot. Um, a colder star, again, might have a peak further over at the red point, um, and then that would be like a red giant. Um, red giants are cooler because their principal radiation is red, which is a longer wavelength than other stars. A hotter star would follow the opposite pattern, so its starting frequency would be higher, its peak would be higher up and further over here, so that's the peak might be about there, and it would look something like... So, and this here, we're getting a peak above violet. This would be a pretty hot star, let's say eight or 9,000 Kelvin. Um, so this, we wouldn't be able to see the UV because the visible eye can't, but this would look like a very blue star to us because it's emitting a lot of blue, indigo, violet colors of light. Um, and therefore it would be a hotter star. So this graph, this black body curve, um, you need to know how to draw or sketch, let's say, um, versions for hotter and colder stars. So make sure you know about the start point, where the peak would be. So the peak will always be higher and further over this way, the hotter the star gets. And then it shouldn't hit the x-axis here because it's still in, in, um, emitting these other wavelengths. So this blue star is emitting more infrared than the orange yellow star um, because it's hotter. Uh, but it's emitting even more blue and purple light, etc. Um, and we can get two laws from this. We can get Wien's law from it and we can get um, Stefan Boltzmann's law from it. So I've just managed to move my camera a little bit there. So Wien's law relates this peak and the temperature. Now we know that as we increase the temperature, we're making the peak go more this way. So we're increasing the frequency of the peak, but we're decreasing the wavelength of the peak. And Wien's law tells us that. Wien's law says that temperature is inversely proportional to the peak or the max. When it says max, it means the peak wavelength. Now, I can rewrite this by saying that T equals a constant over lambda max, or I can rearrange it to say lambda max times T equals B, where B is the constant for this, and it's called the Wien's constant, or Wien's displacement constant, and it has a value of 2.898 times 10 to the minus three, not millikelvin, this is meters kelvin. Um, so if we know the principal wavelength of an object, then we can work out the temperature of it because we know that the principal wavelength divided by B will give us the temperature. And that's really useful with stars because if I look at a star through a spectroscope, um, I can measure the intensity of individual wavelengths. I can see which wavelength has the peak. And therefore, when I work that out, I can work out the temperature of the star. So I don't need to go there with a thermometer, it would melt anyway. Um, but as long as I can measure the maximum wavelength, which I can just by observing the star with a special telescope, well, a special attachment on a telescope, a spectroscope, and I can work out the temperature of that star. Now, the Stefan Boltzmann law comes from something else. It comes from the idea of the area under the curve. So I'm going to just quickly draw another curve in because I didn't think this through like this, right? This is going to be my 4,000 Kelvin curve. And we're going to think about the area underneath the 4,000 Kelvin curve, which is this area here, compared to the area under the 8,000 Kelvin curve, which is this much, much, much bigger area here. Now, from 4 to 8,000, I have doubled the temperature, but it's hopefully really obvious that I've done much more than double the area. So the area underneath isn't double. The area underneath is actually... 16 times bigger. So if I double temperature, I 16 times the area. And 16 is double, which is 2, to the 4. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives us 16. And this hints at the Stefan Boltzmann law. It involves a t to the 4 term. Now the Stefan Boltzmann law comes from the idea of what luminosity is. Now luminosity, if you look at previous videos, 
is the power output of a star. Um, it's how much energy it emits per second, and it is proportional to the temperature of the star in some way. The hotter the star, the more luminous it is, and it's proportional to the surface area of the star. So the bigger the star's surface area, the more energy it can emit per second, and therefore the more luminosity it has, the higher power it has. And what Stefan Boltzmann did in their law is they linked this together. Luminosity is actually directly proportional to the area. Now this here is an area, this is the surface area of a sphere, and stars are spherical. So they said that luminosity is proportional to the area, and it's proportional to t to the 4, and the idea of this t to the 4 comes from that area underneath the graph. So luminosity is proportional to area, and it's proportional to t to the 4, temperature to the 4. And to make it equal, we have to have a constant proportionality. And that constant proportionality is sigma, which is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. And it is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8, wm to the minus 2, k to the minus 4. So this is watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the 4. So the Stefan Boltzmann law relates luminosity and temperature. And remember, if I know the um, wavelength, the peak wavelength of the star, I can work out the temperature, which means I'm going to find it easier to get the luminosity. I still need to know r. Now r is the radius of the star. So I need to know the size of the star. But I'm closer to getting the luminosity. And once I know the luminosity, it becomes a standard candle. And standard candles are really useful for working out distances to stars. So it's all linking together. Now these two laws um, kind of go together with this, the flux law, which we looked at in the last video. And the flux law is how I measure the distance to a star. So the intensity of a star on Earth, that's what I stands for, it's the apparent brightness. When I look at the star on Earth, how bright is it? Is equal to its luminosity, its actual brightness as it is, divided by 4 pi d squared. Now here, you'll notice it's the same thing. You've got the area of a sphere, the area of a sphere. The r here is the radius of the star. This is the distance from Earth to the star. So distance to star from Earth. So they're not the same number. Distance to star from but this equation is useful because it links these three things together. So the flux law and Wien's law don't really link. There's nothing that's the same within them. Uh, but the Stefan Boltzmann law kind of matches these two together because it's got the temperature from Wien's law and it's got the luminosity from the flux law. So it's the key to being able to use Wien's law and flux law together. So that is black body radiation. Um, a lot of the questions involve calculations, involve uh, looking at that graph and analysing it. So make sure you have a go at some practice questions if you are learning this for A-level. Uh, but hopefully that was useful.